Welcome, I'm Kate. There are ad-free versions and subtitles. After taking two weeks off to soak up the last of the sunshine with my husband, fall fell fast. It took me a while to get used to the change in season. It is hard to switch from heat wave to near freezing. There was a week between digging up the strawberries on a hot day and looking for mushrooms in my winter jacket. But I've made that point, haven't I? Truth is, I took more time off to get through the worst. But I am okay now. 134. Taking two slash four weeks off. Mid-September 2024. Northeast Germany. First I took time off for the festival, then for my husband's vacation. Then I wasn't really ready to resurface. I saved seeds, cooked meals, did odd jobs, but I didn't pick up a camera for much of it. The start of the semester was approaching fast, and I felt overwhelmed by what I'd wanted to finish before then. The apartment was dirtier than usual, and I was falling behind on just about everything. I wasn't ready for the winter semester. I wasn't ready for winter. I'd recharged my social and political batteries, but I needed a break from just about everything else. I took long walks through the cold forest with my husband, even foraged the occasional mushroom. I even woke him early one morning so he could fly the drone over foggy fields. I'm trying to notice what I love about fall. The morning fogs are hard to hate. I kept an eye on the harvest in the garden, checked on especially the beans every day. Soon I'd need to get over myself. But not yet. So I gave myself the time I needed to mourn a missed summer. It's supposed to be the last nice day for, well, probably the summer. We're gonna get rain tomorrow and then it's gonna stay rainy for a couple of days. The temperatures are dropping. We're getting closer and closer to our first frost date, even though we technically still have three weeks left. And I think that's just it. Today was the last day in a long time that it's gonna get above 20 degrees. So I think summer is the six weeks of drought we got and we're back to rain and clouds. But I did get a few things done today. I did pull the tomatoes that were done fruiting. There are only a few branches left in all of them. I moved more water around and I just got a few little things done. We also finished those beds. Anyway, it was a good day. It's, I really, really did enjoy the last day of sunshine. I made the best of it. Now I'm going to go home and make dinner. September 25th. It's another dark and stormy day. We're going to get rain again soon. It rained last night and the weather forecast says it's not going to change anytime soon. So I'm going to ignore the noise, put on some headphones and harvest the beets. I was going to leave them to dry on the vines, but it's just too wet and I really don't want them to rot. So in this wet weather, I'm just going to harvest them and deal with them at home. Because of the noise, I'm going to wear the headphones again because it's not nice here right now. And it's going to start raining really soon, so I'm probably going to have to take the pump down right now. I'm moving more water to my land from the neighbor, but I can't do that in the rain. So we're going to see. But anyway, beans. By the time the beans needed to be rescued from non-stop rain, I was ready. Winter was coming, but I was okay. I still had a few weeks before classes started, a few more before the ground would get hard to work. I wrote one hell of a to-do list, then ignored it. This surprisingly worked well. Completely unrelated, but it's driving me nuts. Anyone know what that bird is that keeps yelling in this and the previous clip? When I needed motivation boosts, I'd go through that endless list and check tasks off. For wonder, it worked. Even on a grim day, it was hard not to enjoy the bean harvest. This is a Brunhilde bean, so the pods are purple until cooked. The beans are green though. 
or white? One of the two. And there were so many. The plant was laden with beans. It has more than earned its spot in next year's garden. Planning for next year's garden has been a huge part of getting me through the fast fall. Not only do I have something to look forward to, but the tasks until frost hits won't feel as grey. I might be getting wet knees while harvesting, but I'm also getting the seed stock for next year's bean plants. I'd be drowning in preservation tasks for the next weeks. Winter would start to sound like a break. I would need to take another week off in early October, but that would be overwhelm, not winter blues. The purple TV beans were done for the season as well. I harvested the rest of the pods. The later plantings never got as many beans as the original one. I'll plant more earlier next year. But I'd gotten a good harvest. No preservation, but many green bean dinners throughout the summer. A few weeks later, I'd be able to take the lessons learned from this harvest to plant the beds for next season. Plenty of growing space would be going toward giving beans something to climb up early on. The lemon balm provided a final chance for serve from the garden. I harvested most of the plant. The leaves and stems will soon die back. The root and rhizome system should survive the winter. Making our own syrup instead of buying juice has been a highlight of the year. It all started with a large batch of elderflower syrup and delivery issues with mango juice. Now, it's fun. The bean plants on the string trellis had grown a lot less vigorously than the one on the pole. But they were also planted later. The later TP beans hadn't done as well as the earlier ones. No way to tell if that was timing or trellising. There were still a lot of beans and the pods were full and firm. I'll need more garden years to see what makes them grow better. I can't wait to gain the experience. This is only technically a three sisters bed, unless we count the zucchini squash as a squash. The squash never went further than flowers. There's only a single cob on the corn. But there were beans. I'll try growing corn again next year, both sweet corn and maize, but I'll need to start them much sooner. The neighbor had donated what he said were the last grass clippings for the year, so I put them to good use. The pitiful remains of the tomato bed needed a new layer of mulch to suppress weeds. I also pulled the grass from the bed edges. It's the rhizomatous kind that is a pain to remove. I mulched heavily this summer. I will keep doing heavy mulching. It's been working more than well. Mulch is a lazy gardener's best friend, is one of the lessons I learned this year and keep telling you about. Before I left, I gave the tomatoes in the greenhouse a trim. They were just not getting the push to ripen. A few weeks later, I'd binge on video tutorials for green tomato recipes. They would never ripen. Another lesson learned. So long and thanks for being here. If you want to help me make these videos, go to rootsandcalluses.com slash support so I can keep making these videos. And if you prefer reading, my novels are also out there. I wrote three novels, four now. My fourth one's out. Yes, right, new book. The romance novel is out. I'll tell you all about that, but it's already out there. Anyway, so long and thanks for being here.